Thank you for joining me for another adventure in Thrifting with Purpose. Hello. Here we have a small collection of vintage handkerchiefs and some vintage fabric. I purchased these handkerchiefs for about a dollar. I try not to pay more than a dollar for them unless it's a special design. Most flea markets and antique stores charge as much as four dollars a piece, which I think is quite a lot. If you're decorating for a wedding, or an anniversary and use them as party favors or simply as decor, you can find vintage patterns in bulk on Amazon for as little as 50 cents to 75 cents a piece. Here we have an amber acrylic vintage hand beaded brooch, likely made in the late 60s or early 70s. This is Royal Albert Moss Rose tea set, minus one lid. I paid $7 for this set. Two cups and two saucers recently sold on eBay for $69. I'll let you do the math. The teapot sells for $82 with lid. I paid $7, as I stated, on 50% off day. I was simply delighted to find it. Royal Dalton merged with Minton in 1968, and Royal Albert was acquired at that time. Royal Albert, on its own, incorporated as a limited company in 1933. One of my favorite series, and the only version for me, is Anne of Green Gables 1985 with Megan Fellows. And in that, Marilla serves tea to, to Matthew using a Royal Dalton Old Country Roses teapot, which is an amazing feat of time travel since Harold Holdcroft designed that in 1962, inspired by an English rose garden in full bloom. Here we have recycled Spanish glass. It did not have its original tag. I paid a dollar for it. Uh, it. Took me some time to find out where it originated. It resells for about $18. This lovely piece of California pottery is a buttercrock. And it does not have a high resale value. I did purchase it for a dollar for personal use. And it's designed by Lillian Murray. Now you can probably tell who designed this. This is a Mary Englebright piece. And it resells for about $18. Mary Englebright was born in St. Louis, Missouri. She bypassed both college and art design school and started her career as freelance artist. In 1993, she realized her dream of illustrating children's books. She has a very distinctive style. These are made by Party Light. And I think the mauve and gild gilded um, decor is very enchanting and very vintage. They are missing their original votives. But as you can see, the base is wide enough. It'll accommodate nearly every votive that you can find. This lovely little lady was purchased for repurposing use. She was covered in nicotine and how I remove nicotine from bisque and Porcelain is just giving a coat of Dawn dish liquid. Do not scrub it, but gently wipe it away and the nicotine will dissolve off. Here we have some more chickens. Um, I assume that these are likely Japan. I tried to find the maker's mark, as you can see right there, if you know who that maker is. I'd be very delighted if you'd share that with me. I purchased these for um, a restoration video. I think I have enough items to film that very soon. We are starting a sister channel called The Eclectic Crafter, and I'll share that as soon as we start uploading. And I hope you'll join us there. Here we have a lovely vintage candy dish. It's a beautiful, beautiful buttery yellow in the sunlight. Um, 
I've never been able to decorate with glass before until this year and I've decided to keep this because I only have two pieces of yellow glass which I think is fine um, I'd like to have an assortment of colors but um, I don't have a candy dish in the living room so that is my new candy dish here we have that little collection of vintage fabric it's pre-cut for a project I will be working on very soon I'll share that on the new channel here we have a Delft spoon handle and I purchased this for repurposing I think it's simply adorable I think I paid a quarter for that spoon and here we have another little orphan salt shaker and I'll be restoring that and I will be repurposing it I love orphan salt shakers this sweet little poodle I just happen to have its mate its little sister or brother I just need to find a mom I think I have a mom but someone repainted it pink and I have to remove the paint on it today I'm going to be regilding the bows on both poodles. Here we have this sweet little pottery bird, and this little baby bird, possibly made by Lefton. It did not have its original tag. If you happen to know who might have made it, please share in the comments below. But I gave it a new home for a quarter. I couldn't resist. And there she is. She's very happy. A top, a Thomas Kincaid plate. And there's dad, new brother, new mom, a sister, and another sister. She has a home. This is just a little Wade Whimsy. Wade Pottery was originally founded in 1810. They originally made um, industrial pottery. This is a Bone China teacup. It's Melba Bone China. Bone China was invented by the British in 1794 using the ashes from sheep and other herbivor herbivor herbivorous animals. Um, I had some dental work done recently and I have to learn to speak all over again. Bone China, um, the ashes give it a warm color as well as a translucent quality when you hold it up to the light. And fine China will be a brighter white. But that's how you tell the difference between bone China. And I'm going to be repurposing these little salts or soft servers. These are by Fire King anchor hawking product and they are not a, a white color they're more of a kind of a light vanilla color and I was recently gifted some jadeite and uh, originally there were four but one broke in shipping so now I at least have a set of six I just need to find a mug rack but I love them they're D handles and D-handles are a little harder to find sometimes. And now for something almost completely different. And I'm going to share with you what I do with the handkerchiefs. So you're going to want to iron your handkerchief flat. Uh, when I wash everything, when it comes home from the thrift store, I do add starch in the wash. So fold your handkerchief in half and at each fold give it a good pressing. The starch or sizing in the fabric 
um, helps this process. Now there's your middle and find your quarter. And then lift and fold it toward the center and then give it a good pressing. Every step press, it helps hold this shape of the design. Find your fourth and tuck it under, just so. Give it a good pressing. I love my water sprinkler. That reminds me so much of my mother. She would sprinkle the ironing every Friday night, wild, wild west, and would iron on Saturday for church on Sunday. So now you're going to kind of flare out each side. Gently bring it out as an angle. And don't feel bad if you trip over your fingers. At your first try you will and then after about the third you'll have it down. And there you have your wings. Now you're going to gently fold it over, pinch it in the middle. Now this is where fabric origami can be challenging. So you're going to gently fold that center down. And create two angles that will face each other. And press as you go, it makes the process so much easier. Now I do have a mini iron um, for making small items and if you have one you can use that. This is the tricky wing. So just get that triangle just right. That becomes the hips of the little dress that you're making. And you're almost done. Hang in there. You will trip over your fingers a few times until you get this down. 
I certainly did. Now you're going to gently turn it over. And there you have your little handkerchief dress. Now those are often used in quilts, handkerchief quilts. I will share in the description below um, a book for vintage quilts if you're into quilting. I enjoy crazy quilts. And if you look at these um, handkerchiefs that have the hems are variegated and, and um, have a scalloped and sculpted design, don't be afraid to use them because there is a purpose for them. A handkerchief does not have to be square. This one is a very simple design and also popular in vintage quilt design. And there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, and share, and tell me what you think in the comments below. I'd be delighted to hear from you.